Good afternoon, y'all. You're listening to Bedtime Reddit with Redtime Bedit. And tonight, we're reading r slash malicious compliance, where the letter of the request is followed, but not the spirit of it. And tonight, someone underpays by five cents, and a fight brews over a coffee maker. Coins Galore by Waffle Raven. I work at a fuel place in Australia. We have laws that prohibit paying for stuff with huge, insane piles of coins. I think the rule is generally 10 times the face value of the coin, so 10 $1 coins, etc. However, this law does not apply to petrol if the person claims they have no other way of payment. So, of course, we get frustrating people who just want to get rid of their change. One night, I'm on by myself and a guy fills up his car and comes in. The price is $80.75. So I tell him and he starts pulling out bags of coins. I sigh inwardly and make a point to ask him if he has any other way to pay as there won't be enough room left in our tills. He smirks and says no and rubs it in my face that we have to accept it. Fine. I start counting. I soon notice that he is emptying the bags and that it will barely equal the price. Likely, he counted all the coins then filled it up to the exact number. Huh. As he's getting out one of the last bag of five cent coins, I notice one slips off the counter behind some confectionery. If the guy hadn't been a troll, I'd have pointed it out, but he was. He was telling me to hurry up and that he didn't have all day. He also said that the service here was lousy and he didn't know how I kept my job being so slow. Now there was a line also forming behind him. So, I get to the end of the counting and, oh, what a shame, he's five cents shorts. I tell him, and he says, I'm joking. I show him the piles and tell him to count them if he doesn't believe me. He starts looking in his pockets and his wallet. No coins. It's just five cents, it's not that much. Then you'll have no problem paying it, sir. He starts looking panicked and looks at the others in line for help, but many are regulars and on good terms with me. They overheard how horrible he's being and offer him nothing. Look, it's just five cents. I'll come back tomorrow. Sorry, sir, but if you leave without paying the full amount, it constitutes as a drive-off and the police will need to be informed. He goes pale. Then he goes bright red and pulls out a $100 bill he had the whole time. Oh... I thought you said you had no other form of payment, sir. I say drawing it out. Just take it. I'd be happy to, but first, I'll load all your coins back into your bags for you. He is bright red, and I can practically feel the embarrassment coming off of him. When he finally leaves, the people in line are staring daggers at him. Then... One of the regular customers in line steps up and picks up the five cent piece. He must have seen the guy drop it too. Serves him right for being a jerk, he says. Ah, that felt good. You know, what I really want to know is how he was able to get the gas to exactly 80.75. As far as I know, there's no limiter on gas pumps when you pay with cash, so he would have had to count the money, then fill up the gas. He couldn't have filled it up then counted up the change in the car because he said he'd have to come back tomorrow for more change. The only way this could have worked is that he brought 80.75 in change and decided to be ballsy and fill up the gas tank to exactly that amount. It does make sense considering that he had the $100 bill. Refuse to contribute to the coffee fund? No more coffee then. Bye, c'est porf. I work as a mechanic at a manufacturing plant in Nowhere, America, and I've been out there for over a decade now. Before I got assigned to my current location, the only way to get coffee here was to either bring some from home or pay a dollar at the vending machine to get the really cheap stuff. I decided to go with the first option, but took it one step further by bringing my spare coffee maker from home and bringing the usual supplies in periodically. I kept it in the mechanic's office in plain view. And for the longest time, it was very apparent that I was the only one using my coffee maker, even though I never said it was exclusively for me. 
This went on for about a year until I got a partner on my shift who also drank coffee. We came up with the idea of sharing a coffee fund by leaving a jar for spare change next to the coffee maker. Whenever we ran out of some like sugar or whatever, one or two of us would use the accumulated change in the jar to help replenish our supplies. And this was all well and good until my partner got promoted to maintenance supervisor some years later, making him my new boss. And I was by myself again. I left the jar sitting next to the coffee maker as usual and kept using the same old routine. I also put a note on the side of the coffee maker, in plain view, that said, If you use the coffee maker, please put some spare change in the coffee jar so we can keep the supplies in stock. This was just in case someone from a different ship decided to use it when I wasn't there. However, one day I noticed I was running out of sugar way too fast. I don't put much sugar in my coffee to begin with, so this told me that someone else was using my coffee maker. Eventually, I noticed all the supplies were getting too low too fast, and it's not just the sugar. This normally wouldn't be a big deal, except I also noticed the jar wouldn't accumulate it like it used to. It either had the change I put into it, or someone would be taking the change out but not restocking our coffee supplies. I put up with this for a little while, but eventually got fed up with being the only one buying supplies for the coffee, while one or more others were using it and taking money out of the jar. So, I took the coffee maker home and just started filling up my thermos with coffee and bringing it to work with me. About a week later, I was stopped in the aisle by a supervisor, not mine, as I was trying to leave for the day. The following exchange occurs. Saul is the supervisor. Hey, Sebolf, what happened to the coffee maker? Did it break? Ah, I was wondering who else was using it. Nah, it didn't break. I just got tired of the people taking money out of the coffee jar without using said money to buy more supplies. I was still buying them out of pocket. You took it home? Yeah, and I'd been using my ferros to bring coal. You can't take company property like that. You weren't the only one using it. We all used it. Oh, but it's a man. You either bring that back, or I'm reporting this to the boss, and we will see what he's going to do about it. I'll bring it in if people actually will contribute to the fun instead of me having to buy everything out of pockets. You will do your job. My job is to fix these machines, not to be the company barista. He better be here tomorrow, or I'm going to boss. He walks off before I could say anything else. The next day comes, and I, of course, didn't bring my coffee maker back to the plant. At the end of my shift, Saul confronts me out again. Sepulf, did you bring the coffee maker back? Nah, I told you I'm not going to be the only one supplying it. You can't take company property home. That coffee maker has been there for years, and you need to bring it back. I know it's been there for years. It's been there as long as I've been here because I brought it from home. That is my coffee maker. I'm calling the boss right now, and we'll see what happens to you. Go ahead, I don't care. You can tell me what to do with my personal property. I then walk out to my car and leave. While on the way home, my boss calls me. If you recall from earlier in the story, he used to be my partner. Even after his promotion, we remain close friends. The following conversation happens. Hey Bob, what's up? I just got off the phone with Saul. What's this all about you taking Brunt Company property home? That's not like you, man. What is he even talking about? He didn't tell you what it was? Nope. He just said you admitted to stealing company property and refused to return it. Did you even ask what the supposed company property is? I did, but he wouldn't calm down enough to tell me. It looks like you really ticked him off for good. And... Yeah, I know. Hey, do you remember that coffee maker I had in the office way back when? 
Ha <laughs> ha, yeah, the culprit fund, right? Say, did anyone else beside us you start using that thing? M man, that was some good coffee. Why are you bringing this up anyway? Wait, don't tell me that the company property Saul is referring to is... Yeah, he's talking about my coffee mix here! Look, Sebar, I know it's that your personal property there, but I really don't want Saul raising a stink about this up to management. Nothing will come of it if he does, but it'll be a big waste of time for them to investigate and eventually write up some stupid company property email about property theft and blah blah blah. J j just bring it back. Well, I'm not going to be the only one see playing the coffee. How about this? Bring it back in and keep a spare set of coffee supplies in your personal locker. I'm bringing some supplies for everyone to use at first, and even use the coffee fund jargon. But after that initial stock, just just only sub resupply for yourself. That way, if Saul or anyone else wants to use it, they're gonna have to bring in their own supplies when that initial stock runs dry. Is that okay with you? Yes, I think I will do that. And that's what I did. The next day, I did as Bob asked. But I also kept additional supplies for myself in the personal locker. I didn't tell anyone else about this except for Bob. Saul confronted me again the same day. I see you have brought the coffee maker back. Yes, Bob told me too. You're lucky he didn't report you to human resources for it. Report me to human resources for the coffee maker. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Now we can have all our coffee again. No thanks to you. No thanks to me. Yes, this is my coffee maker here. Don't get that tone with me. I'll call Bob again and he'll straighten you out again. As planned, I let the initial coffee supply stock run dry without ever replenishing it. I also didn't contribute anything to the coffee fund jar. This took about a week, and there was never any change in the jar. Saul confronts me again. Hey, Sibor, we are completely out of cream air and sugar, and the coffee tin itself is running low. Yeah, okay. Don't you think you should get on with that? I am not the company body staff, sir. Okay, but we don't have any cream air or sugar. Then maybe you should buy some. I thought you did that. Oh me? No, I had the surgery that prevents me from pooping out cream air. Buy your own. Sepor, you need to do your job. I do my job, what do you do? Sepor, no, so what do you do? Don't say your job, because your job isn't so best as someone to buy coffee supplies out of their own pocket, is it? I, uh, that's not very nice. You're right. It's not very nice at all. It's also not nice to complain so bad because I won't bring my own personal property to work, now is it? But we need cough. Then you bring your own. It isn't my job. If you want the cream air, then you need to bring it in yourself. I'm not supplying the coffee anymore. Say poor. I'll call Bob. Call him then. He'll tell you that the same thing I just told you and you'll have wasted your time. Just like how you're wasting my time right now. I'm going on. Has a good one. Wait, come back. When I go in for my next shift, all the supplies are fully restocked. And they remain that way for good. Someone else has taken the responsibility of resupplying the coffee. I even notice change in the jar regularly building up. I haven't contributed a single penny, but it's still filling up. Someone else has taken over the handling of coffee supplies. I haven't asked who, but I think it's either Saul doing himself, or he's gotten someone else doing it. It's free coffee for me, so I don't care either way. 
Thanks for watching. That was r slash malicious compliance. Make sure to leave a comment if you have a suggestion on how to improve my videos.